Welcome to my definitive Josh's Constant Guide. This is a hidden achievement in BTD6 that you can't actually see in the game until after you unlock it. And so that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you guys how to unlock this achievement super, super easily. So essentially what we have to do is beat a game of chimps on an expert map by having at least one tier 5 spike factory. And so the map we're choosing is Dark Castle, as you can see, and the tier 5 we're going for is Perma Spike because awesome tower and a perfect map for it. So let's jump into it. Start off with a sub as top left as possible in that bottom right pool of water. Take your time with the placement and make sure you get it right. It's not difficult, but it's important. The Dart Monkey goes right about there so that the right side of its hair lines up with the leftmost vertical line of that bridge. And if you got the placement right, you'll beat round six very closely as you saw right there. During seven turn off auto start, because at the end of the round we can afford our second sub and we need that going forward. So just chill for now. This is a really simple guide. This map is actually quite easy. Get your second sub as bottom left as possible in the top pool of water. So pretty much just exactly opposite that bottom sub. And now you can turn auto start back on because like I just said, this map is pretty simple even though it's classified an expert, it, it isn't really. So that's good for us. During round 10, get twin guns on your top submarine. And now we simply save up to Gwen. The reason I'm using Gwen is because she's my second favorite hero and I wanted to use a hero that everyone has unlocked at the start of the game. So you don't have to have bought any specific hero to beat this map with this guide. During 13, turn off auto start because we afford Gwen at the end of the round. You want to put Gwen so that the bottom right part of her range goes through that middle circular metal knob on the left side of the bridge. So right there. It should cut through that, and that's how you know you got the placement right. Place her as low as possible to the track, and just leave her on first. At the end of 14, get a sniper about there. Try and place the sniper exactly where I do it. Don't put it too close to the middle of the castle, because that will be important later on. Make sure you set your sniper strong, by the way. At the end of 18, get a factory right there, and if you got the placement right, which really isn't difficult, as you can see, it will shoot spikes into the gate, which is exactly what we want. Get full metal jacket on your sniper at the end of 20, so before 21. Makes that round a lot easier because it has pinks. For 22, Use Gwen's Cocktail of Fire. I didn't, and as you see, it gets very close. And then for 23, get Smart Spikes, and it won't get close either. So both 22 and 23 got really close, because I didn't use the Cocktail on 22, and I didn't get Smart Spikes before 23. As long as you do both of those things, it won't be nearly as close. And at this point, you can turn Auto Start back on. Make sure you set your factory to Smart. Then get Airburst on that top sub. And this is one of the best upgrades in the game. It's very, very strong early game. After you get Airburst, upgrade your factory to a 0-1-2, so fast production. Then even fast production during round 30.
Then get triple guns on that top sub during 32. 33, lots of camos, but that's not really a problem because we have a spactory. Mid 33, place a dart monkey in that corner as top right as possible. That's just going to be a pre-placement because we're going to get advanced intel on our sub mid 34. Get long life spikes at the end of 35. And then after the first wave of camo greens on 36, use Gwen's first ability. Get AP darts, mid 38. And then place a dart monkey about there so that it can see that top track. Because that's where the Moab is going to come out of on round 40. On round 40, you just use Gwen's Cocktail. And then get Deadly Spikes mid 41. Forty three, use Gwen's Cocktail at the start of the round. Just for some ceramic cleanup, because yeah, that cocktail is actually really, really powerful. After 43, get a 320 Berserker Brew Alchemist next to your Spactory. Then a village above it. Make sure the Spactory and the Alka are in range. And then upgrade that village to jungle drums. On 47, use Cocktail of Fire at the start of the round because there's some ceramics that we need to delete. So you're probably wondering why we didn't go for a discount village and then upgrade our alchemist. And the reason is for the Josh's constant achievement, you cannot discount your spike factory at all and so that makes it not worth buying this, the discount upgrades just to discount the alchemist and so instead we just opted to buy a 200 village instead during 49 turn off auto start because we got to do some placements before 50 at the end of 49 get an alchemist right there between gwen and the sub as right as you possibly can because we want it to target the sub and not Gwen. After that, get another village above the Alchemist. Give it the discount upgrades. Yet another village above that second village. Place both of them as low as possible. Give that one the discount upgrades as well. Then upgrade that Alchemist to a 320. And then get Jungle Drums on the top village. And then just put another sub. Really anywhere in the water, but yeah, to the left or to the bottom is better. In double discount range, of course. Upgrade the sub to 200. And now you can turn auto start back on. As you can probably tell, this is kind of the beginning of our sub army. As you saw in the thumbnail. Upgrade that second sub to AP darts over the next few rounds. So, during 51, it'll be triple guns. Then get AP darts at the end of 52. And then get Grow Blocker on that lower village. Just to make sure that we know that that's the camo village. And we don't accidentally misclick and buy second jungle drums, because that would be catastrophic. Get Radar Scanner before 56 on that bottom village, and then place an Ice Monkey next to Gwen, as bottom right as possible, in double discount range of course. And upgrade that one to a 023 Cryo Cannon with Deep Freeze. Then get Icicles mid 57. 
Then upgrade your top village to a primary training. After that, get a glue gunner. As close to your icicle as you possibly can, while having it in double discount range. So you might have to place it a little bit higher to have it in double discount range, but that's okay. And then just start upgrading that glue to a 013 Moab glue. And this is pretty much the setup. Set your glue to strong because it's a Moab glue right now, so it's just better on strong. Relentless glue, which we are not getting in this guide, is actually better on first, but Moab glue better on strong. So just leave it like that for now. 63, cocktail the first wave. And as you can see with the second wave, you don't actually have to cocktail. But yeah, I just do it to be safe. Firestorm, the third wave of 63, again, just to be safe, even though Icicles, for the most part, takes care of it, as you saw with that second wave. You can also use Cocktail of Fire on 64 if you'd like. If you're feeling unlucky, I recommend it. I'm back in time for 75. All you have to do this round is just move Gwen's cocktail to the middle part of the track, as far left as possible. And then just use it when a lot of BFBs get to that middle part of the track. You can also use Firestorm if you'd like, but I don't believe that's necessary. 76, you can use cocktail if you'd like, but again, as you see, not really necessary. I recommend turning off auto start during 77 and then firestorm when there's a lot of BFBs on the screen on 77. Get perma spike after the first wave of 78 and now you can turn auto start back on. It's probably better for 78 if you don't use cocktail of fire on 77 and just use firestorm on 77 and then just cocktail the first wave of 78. Once you get Peace Bike though, it's Jova, as you can probably tell. There's nothing we have to do from now until we afford Icicle Impale, so I'll see you guys then. On round 90, use Firestorm as soon as you see a DDT. DDTs are among the most vicious balloons in BTD6. They are camo lead black balloons that go really fast. Now the middle cross path impale, which is what we have on this run, can't actually hit DDTs naturally, whereas top cross path can. Luckily with Gwen, as soon as we use the Firestorm ability, 
she lets the towers around her hit leads, and so we just have to give our impale a camo village, as we have with that bottom village, and we just destroy DDT super easily. So that's the assignment on the DDT rounds, which are 90, 93, 95, and 99. The rest of these rounds are super chill. During round 93, use Firestorm as soon as you see a DDT. You can take it slow if you need to, if you feel unsure just take it slow and it's much easier. But don't worry if your timing's a bit off because Perma Spike does a lot of good damage to DDTs so it can tank a few of them no problem. During 94, get Sub Commander on your leftmost sub on the top side, because that's the one that's getting the Alk buff. And then just turn off Auto Start after you get Subcom, because now we're in the state of placing as many subs as possible in the water here. So at the end of 94, get your third sub, fourth actually. Place it right there. Upgrade it to 203. For round 95, use Firestorm whenever you see a DDT, and then, then just upgrade that third sub on the top side to armor piercing darts. At the end of the round, another sub top side. Make sure it's in double discount range. All these subs will be in double discount range, no problem. Try and place them as close to the walls as possible. Upgrade that sub to a 202. and just work it up to A204 when you can afford it, mid-96. As you can probably tell, Moab Glue and Impale just completely slows down Moabs like it's nobody's business, which is great for Perma Spike because it needs a lot of time to build up a lot of spikes in the back there the end of 96, another sub in double discount range, upgrade it to a 204. You want to make sure when you're placing these subs that it has the anchor symbol above it, which means that it will be in range of your sub commander, because that's really important. At the end of 97, another sub, anywhere in double discount range, and in range of your subcom. Then just start upgrading it to a 204 as well. For 98, use Cocktail when the ZOMGs get to the middle part, and then just start upgrading the last sub you place to AP darts as well. Get another sub at the end of 98. Upgrade it to a 203. And then for 99, just use Firestorm whenever you see a DDT. Get AP darts on your final sub on the top side at the end of 99. Clear the top area of trees for $1,000. And then place a dart monkey right about there so our subs can see the start of that top track. Use the cocktail when the bad gets over that spot. And yeah, that's it. That's all you have to do. Is this the easiest Josh's Constant Guide? Not really. There's a lot of ability usage, but that's kind of the fun part of it. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new about the Josh's Constant achievement and just how to play BTD6. If you're new here, 